So we are live. Welcome back to season two, episode one of Conversations from the Couch. Y'all don't have to get all quiet. We were just, it's so funny. We were just laughing and stuff in the background until Kyra said, 2.30, 2.30, 2.30. So, <laughs> but we'll take a little bit of time to let people join us. I know it might be slow for some because we had to do a little reschedule, but we hope you're joining us today. Bring a friend. Come into Instagram Live because we got one of the most amazing people to talk to, Dr. Tony Sims Muhammad. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Who is new to, uh, can we still say you're new? Yes, yes, but I'm definitely new. I think you're new <laughs> until like a year. A year, yes. Give me at least a year. Yeah. I'm still new. I, I've been saying I'm going to claim newbie status for at least three years. Okay, well, can I get that same no. extent? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. There's a different um, level it. requirement for presidents. <laughs> I knew it. So. We have people like you that make sure that, you know, we know what we're talking about. Absolutely. So you have to, like, come up. Okay, okay. Quickly. I got you. Yeah, got get you. up to speed. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, so hopefully you all are joining us today because today is the last day for Black History Month. Right? Oh, the last day. Why do we get hmm. the shortest day of the year? Well, I think this... Um, is it the shortest day of the year? Shortest month. Sorry, shortest month. month. Shortest month? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's just because we did not want to um, Ruffle and infringe, feathers. right? Mm -hmm. So we thought that, and really it, it was to start the year off. So we knew coming into January is New Year, so why not take that next month and run with it, right? Look at you being all educational. Well, you know. I was, I, was just trying to be yeah. I was just trying to be petty. I know, I can't be and petty. You stole that yeah, from sorry, me. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. You stole my right to be petty. <laughs> well, there it is. So I think we'll go ahead and get started since you stole my right to be petty. You know, I was trying to be non-presidential. <sighs> sorry. And uh, Dr. Muhammad completely took that opportunity away. So we'll become presidential now and go back to the show in our regularly scheduled program. So welcome again. This is season two of Conversations from the Couch, episode one for the spring 2023 semester. And I am your host, Dr. Daria Willis, president at Howard Community College, and I'm celebrating a year. I'm so excited. So joining us on the hot pink couch is our new associate vice president of teaching and learning at HCC. She is a scholar. She holds a bachelor's degree in sociology from the University of Louisiana. So I'm guessing she got beignets every week oh, yes, when she was absolutely. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red beans and rice, all that. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, a master's degree <laughs> in social science. Don't talk like that. I haven't had like a full lunch. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so again, a master's degree in social science and sociology from Grambling State University. You know I went to FAMU, right? Oh yeah, I know, I know. Don't, don't, don't get us started yeah, now. Yeah, we won't get all started right. on that. <laughs> don't even know where Grambling is. But anyways, and a Doctor of Arts and Humanities in African and African American Studies from Clark Atlanta University. She's been a college professor for the majority of her academic career, teaching for 26 years. Yes. She holds tenure in sociology and African American studies. Her accomplishments are a whole bunch of them, right? Oh, yes. They are very, they're all over the place. There's a whole resume that you can pull on her. She has a community service award and she was recognized recently as a woman of excellence by the Lafayette Commission on Women. And now we are honored to not only have her as our Associate Vice President of Teaching and Learning at HCC, but right here with us on Instagram Live. So please welcome Dr. Tony Sims Muhammad. Thank you for coming I'm on the show. I'm so excited about being on the pink couch. I've seen it, I've heard about it, and now I'm on it. And mm. you've been in this office a couple times, and today is the first time she realized that this sofa was here. Yeah, I'm a little slow sometimes, but so you know. Shame <laughs> on you. So let's begin with a little bit about your story. So tell us who you are, how you, I mean, just with a, experience for 26 years in teaching, an interdisciplinary background. How do you think about all of that and the time and space that we're in with this being the last day of Black History Month? And then how did all of that bring you here to HCC? I know that was like a triple question in one, but yeah. what do you think? I think it's just about purpose. You know, um, earlier when we visited the museum, right? Um, I've always known that I had a purpose, and that purpose was to be a part of conversations around hope, um, change, and inspiration. 
And so since I was probably old enough to stand up and talk, I always wanted to engage others mm -hmm. about what they knew um, and what, what life was really about, right? And so just doing that, having those early conversations with as many people as I could, uh, just led me to knowing since uh, I was, like I said, old enough to stand up and hold a book and um, hearing my great grandmother say to me, you know, one day you're going to be a great teacher. And I just said, mm, I don't know if I want to be a teacher, but I knew early enough to know I was either going to be an attorney, I was going to be a teacher, or I was going to be an entertainer because I also sing. Mm. And so uh, I had so many talents growing up that it was just really hard for me to choose. But ultimately, I determined that I was going to be uh, in higher education. Mm. And I determined that when I was in high school, went to college at SMU in Dallas, took my first introduction to black studies course and changed my major from broadcast journalism to sociology after doing a career assessment, which is why those are so important, by the way, right? That career assessment told me you should either major in sociology or history or anthropology. Mm. I chose sociology because it was the most broad. Uh, it would allow me to really understand human behavior and mm -hmm. society and culture. And so this has led me on my journey for the last 30 some odd years of being in higher education. I always knew I loved school even when I was little. Mm. I just love school. I love the environment. I love being in a place where people are constantly engaging in uh, scholarship and, and research. And so it just became second nature to me. And it is a part of my divine purpose for being here. Beautiful. I don't think anybody could have said it better than that. When people ask me, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm like, well, I was born in ATL, <laughs> but you just gave us a full educational folk. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad. So you can hear the passion, though, that you bring to it. And um, I remember when you were interviewing, um, a lot of the comments that we heard in the feedback surveys was just your passion. So how do you articulate that passion that you have for the love of the classroom, love of learning, love of that educational environment to what you plan to do here at HCC? Well, one of the things that I've always told my students is you have to know who you are, not where you're from, not where you're going, not what your degree is, not how much money you make, not what your job is, but who you are, whose you are, and what you're here for. And those things are always critical. And when answering that question for myself, I'm very clear about that at the state and age that I am now, the experiences that I've had. And it's always been there for me. Even when I was little, my mother didn't bother me. She really didn't. <laughs> she just said, that's something different about that child. I'm not going to try and engage her. And so it just allowed me to really flourish in knowing who I was mm -hmm. and being in tune with that. And one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Maya Angelou uh, is uh, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And then the other favorite quote that I have from her is, you take your people with you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. So I know who I am, I know who I represent, I know where I come from, and so for me, that is an a important part of me showing up and being my most authentic self. So coming to HCC was and is in line with my divine purpose for being here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, and it that dovetails a bit for what we both just experienced not too long ago at the Howard County um, African American History and Culture Museum that is reopening after what I understand a couple years of delay from the pandemic, and then there was a major flood, but it was standing room only. It was and standing room only. That beautiful facility the county exec, members of the county council, um, many of our elected officials were in the room, and I just felt chills just being in that space because absolutely, we're seeing a shift take place in our country Yes, where we don't want to talk about certain things, and it's it, people say that it's woke this or that or whatever the case may be, but you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous about the direction that I see that we're heading because it's, to me, it's not about that. As a historian, you're a sociologist and mm -hmm. I'm a historian, I mm -hmm. just believe in talking about the facts and how do we use those facts to learn about where we've been, where we are today, and where we need to go. And 
if we see this breakdown of we're going to take history away from people, then what you said earlier about being able to know who you are and whose you are, like how do we overcome that in this space and time and where we are? This is 2023. That's amazing. And I feel like history repeats itself just in different forms. But here in Maryland, we're excited because we got our first black governor. Yay, mm -hmm. and I think that's amazing. Um, just, just really proud to see that happen. And we're still seeing the first continue to yes. happen. Yes. But how do we prepare for the future? We got a presidential election that's coming up and we wanna be able, and, and to be clear, I don't care whose history we're talking about. The facts are the facts and we need to make sure that we keep those in front of our students and in front of our communities and our society. But how do you, in the space of teaching and learning, where it's your job to ensure that our faculty have all the resources that, resources that they need and require to go into the classroom and to keep teaching truth? Like, where do you see yourself fitting into that in a time and space where wrong is becoming right and right is becoming wrong? You know, we've, we've faced this um, journey. We've been on this journey for a long time. In our black national anthem, you know, we sing about, you know, bitter the chastening rod, right? So we, we know that we are still uh, evolving in this work. Mm. We know that we have to show up every day. We have to remain committed and steadfast on this journey. We cannot allow things to distract us from the work that is being done. The fact that people actually have this disposition and energy to throw negative things into the atmosphere of the work that we're doing speaks volumes to the work that has already been done. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm a part of the foundation of where we are today, just like you are. And so the fact that we're here, right? We're still here. And there's nothing anybody can do about it, even with all of the negative the distractions around what is happening in our atmosphere. We won't be overcome. I firmly believe in this principle, the fact that we show up every day committed, and I'm committed to teaching and learning. I'm committed. One of the things I said in my interview, uh, and even when I came here, was having been at HBCUs, right, historically mm -hmm. black colleges and universities, having been at predominantly white institutions, I've always showed up as my most authentic, professional self, willing to do the work. And I think as long as we show up committed and ready and willing to do the work, there's nothing we can't overcome. And I don't allow any distraction or negative naysayer or perspective to blunt the eye on the prize, right? Mm -hmm. You remember that series? Mm -hmm. You've gotta keep your eyes on the prize all the time. You gonna make me keep your eyes <laughs> on the prize. Oh, <laughs> You better say Who it. didn't have to write Don't that? play with me Ooh, in goodness. here. All right now, I'm my on this couch. All right. <laughs> Ooh, I got chills. That was my HBCU experience. How many times we had to watch that? <laughs> Girl, I pulled that out when I was working on my, um, my comps. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because once you realize how much you've already overcome, That's you right. know that these things are gonna continue to exist. So mm -hmm. you don't even focus on them anymore. You just focus on the goal, the end result, the outcome. And so it doesn't matter how small it is. We have a saying in African diaspora studies, each one reach one, teach one. So we're not trying to go out here and turn the world over all at once. We're just gonna do it one person at a time. So let's take that one person at a time. Cause I heard that you call students your babies. Oh yes, yes, my babies. I, and I, I got babies know. of all persuasions, all over the country, well, we gonna all have to fight ages. Over that I got that, they're my babies. I got 23,000 babies at HCC. Oh, this this is true, you do. <laughs> so you might be trumping And me I right don't now. call, I mean, they know I say it out of love, but when you go into teaching and higher education and um, and that's why I love to park in the West Garage because it enters me right through the gallery. Because when I leave every day, I see students, and when I come in, I see them. And Absolutely. I have made that commitment because I want to see them at the beginning of my day, and I want to see them at the end of my Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Right? But what's your message to your babies? I mean, mm. 
because I've got three of them at home biologically, my babies, right? And mm -hmm. my oldest is 18, 10, and four. And sometimes, and I remember now, I'm like, darn, I'm turning into my mama, because <laughs> stuff she used to say to me, I say to them, and then Absolutely. they look at me like, oh, here she go. <laughs> but, you know, it's in a different perspective now. Yes. It, at least, I think in what we're dealing with today, no, I didn't live through the civil rights movement, my mama did. Yes. I don't remember, I, all I know about that is what I've researched and read and learned in that environment. Absolutely. But I believe that we're heading into a different movement in different space. And so how do we make sure that our quote unquote babies who are gonna be, or already our gen, a next generation of leaders that will take them and keep moving, like John Lewis said, you know, in his words, what did he say, good, 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 Good fight, good um, trouble. good trouble. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Always stay, you know. Let's 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 do that good trouble. So I think, think I think what you do just the just the the fact that you park in the west garage, you come in, you mm -hmm. see them, you you recognize them as people, as human beings, as important. Uh, to the fabric of what we're doing, right? What is the purpose of what we're doing if it isn't to come into contact with, engage, right? Those who may not have anyone who sees them, right? And I do the same thing. I love parking in the East Garage. I come right in into the open area in, in um, what is that? academic commons, mm -hmm. and I get to see students, I speak to students, you know, I ask them how they're doing. If I really wanted to, to engage them, I would stop and have a whole conversation mm -hmm. with them about what's really going on mm -hmm. with you, you know, how, what is your experience really like here? And so I think that just the fact that if we take the time to see the students, even in my classes, I've had classes with 125 students at one time, and for me, I know every one of them. I know their faces. I engage them in such a way that I want them to know I'm here to connect with you. This isn't just about me teaching you this discipline, mm -hmm. right? This isn't just about me being an associate VP for teaching and learning. This is about me recognizing you and your value because when I look at you, I see me. And I think a lot of times when we come into higher education in particular and education in general, uh, we may not have that understanding. I was watching a TikTok the other day where the students gave the teacher a gift and um, she was just crying and emotional because she didn't know that she had reached them in such a way. She mm -hmm. had connected with them. And so for me, I think the more we see each other, we see each other, we, we place value on the individual, in the space, in the time that we have, no matter how limited it is, limited it is to engage with them. That's how we are able to ensure that this work will continue. Mm -hmm. And it will continue because once you make that connection, they know this is someone who I can draw from mm -hmm. because so much has been poured into me, right? I got a lot to give, a, to give out. That's beautiful. So when we think about um, your point on TikTok, so I've been watching this particular one where there's, it's, it's got to be an elementary school teacher. She's probably a kindergarten or first grade teacher. I don't know if you've seen it but they were doing the letters of the alphabet in phonics. Mm. And they had this like rap song, <laughs> A is I and B is B and C. And then the, the kids were just like all into it. Yes. And I thought, wow, I mean, why, why can't that be relevant in the entire span That's of right. education? Because I look at my son who's 10 years old, he hates school. I yeah. think that kid hates school, yeah. but he loves to learn but he likes, he's a tactile learner. He does it in a different way, in different space. So what are your ideas on making sure that education remains relevant um, and culturally responsive? Because 60% of our student population are students of color. Mm. And that little video where it was a, a teacher of color and students of color. Mm. And, her A is I and B, is, and it was just this little hip little song, mm -hmm. but all those little babies knew from A to Z what the letters were and the sounds. 
And yeah, she could have taught them real straight and narrow what it was, but she appealed to them in a way that was culturally responsive to yes. who they are and where they've come from and just their experiences. So what are your plans for enhancing our curriculum with that at HCC as we think about all of the various cultures that are represented here at this institution? Really thinking more critically and creatively about how we bring uh, culture as a tool, as a mechanism to connect with the students mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our instruction. So right now we're um, looking at intentional design. I plan to play a critical role in what that intentional design looks like because students want to see themselves in the curriculum. And so that's why the hip hop works. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kawanza uh, uh, Kanjufu has a book uh, where a workbook where he talks about curriculum and hip hop and how important it is for uh, modern day educators to realize the value, the intrinsic value of hip hop to instruction and to reaching particularly all of our students, right? Because practically everybody loves hip hop. I mean, isn't I mean, that poetry though? It's everywhere. It is. It is the hip -hop highest. Is poetry. And they are our greatest teachers as mm -hmm. well. And so we even have, um, I think TI offers a class at Morehouse Shut or one up. of, yeah, at Clark. It's in one of those in, in the um, wow. AU complex. But, but there have been, and Common was offered something as well. So there's been a lot of conversations around even bringing in these guest lecturers, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because music is a, a, a big part of our culture, any type of artistic expression. Uh, there's a big movement right now in terms of poetry, and we had a great event on campus just last week I went to and checked it out where we had uh, open mic and poetry. Um, and so there's there's those opportunities that I'd like to bring. And then there's also just my own energy around the classroom. I told your, your colleagues, my colleagues in particular, that they've inspired me so much. I, I kind of hung up my teaching uh, shoes, but I might have to step back into the classroom even myself just to infuse some energy. You're taking my next question. I'm sorry. I, I just get excited, but I'll stop there. No. <laughs> I was going to ask. Do you miss the classroom? I don't. I don't. And I let me do. Let me tell you why I don't miss it. Because, uh -oh. because I actually shared this with someone in another conversation on Friday. There has to be people like you and me who move into other positions of institutions in order to effectuate change. Mm -hmm. And so we can open the door for the next person mm -hmm. that can come in, that can see us, that we're the models, right? for them to see that, okay, this is possible. This is an opportunity that I can realize. And so to me, there has to be this because when I've been there, it's always been that problem of, uh, in the past, right, being in the classroom, not having enough representation in the places that you need it. So we have to create that balance. The space for that. That's right. All right, one more question real quick before we go to Q&A. Just like that um, show, we just said it. What's the name of that movie, y'all? The one with Sanan Lathan and Tay Diggs. Brown Sugar, Brown yes. So like in the movie <laughs> Brown Sugar, tell us about the moment you fell in love with hip hop. Tell us about the moment you fell in love with black history. Oh yeah, that, that class in, um, when I went to SMU, my first class, Introduction to Black Studies, it was powerful, it was eye-opening, it made me change my major. I said, no, I've got to do something different. And then I became very strategic about it. I said, I'm not gonna major in black studies undergrad because I knew I wanted to be in higher education. I knew I wanted to be a president. I met Dr. Janetta Cole when I was 18. And, oh, and I had a great conversation wonderful. with her. That's right, Sp president of Spelman then. Mm. And she encouraged me and inspired me. And I said, I'm gonna be a president one day, just like you. And so I said, I'm gonna choose sociology because I knew I needed the, 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 the foundational major. And I did that and then I, I moved very quickly. I had my bachelor's. And by 20, I had my master's by 22. I started, I, I got accepted into doctoral school by 23. And I actually, well, 22, but I started when I was 23 going on 24. And so I moved through school really quickly because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And so it was very hard being so young, right? Mm -hmm. Being, uh, moving through that, mm -hmm. that process like that. But I was determined to do that. And so I think it's important for us to, 
to be able to model again model what that. it is that, Beautiful. that we want. So that's when I fell in love, black studies, moved quick, got what I wanted to get done and said, I'm not listening to none of the naysayers. I don't care what you say I'm doing. That part. Doing. All right, y'all. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for that. <laughs> I love before it. Before she that steal part. another question that I was going to ask, and she answers it before I even say it. So let's move on to Q&A. What questions do we have for the wonderful Dr. Tony Sims Muhammad? So we had a comment from the Silas Craft Collegians Program. As you were um, singing Eyes on the Prize, they said, come on, Dr. Muhammad. <laughs> come on. We want to hear that voice. You oh, said no. you can sing. Oh, no. What you got? And you know what? Mary I had actually, a little lamb. Look, and I actually, I really don't, um, I don't know the full song to that, but. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Sex with chocolate. <laughs> Sex with chocolate. Yeah. 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 Well, you go ahead. Yeah, you know, talent chocolate, shows, you? musicals, I've done it all. It you just made me it. think about coming to America. Come on, let's go. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Let's go. The first one. <laughs> She's so funny. Not the other okay. one. <laughs> never ready. I'm never ready. <laughs> what else we got? We had a comment from Kyron. Would you like me to read it or would you like to say it, Kyron? I think you read it. So, um, Kyron, current student, and he's also a producer here at the college, says the efforts from our higher ups definitely trickles down to every last student. HCC provides such belonging. That it, that it makes one proud to be a part of such a community. Thank you all. Yeah. Oh, Thank y'all. Beautiful. Y'all make Absolutely. it happen. Absolutely. Y'all make it happen. It's That's all, what's all up. we do is open up the door and then we get out the way. That's why I get the world out it, the way. Don't do, do it. You Don't block them. Do. Don't block them. Let them through. <laughs> <laughs> You're an actress too. Huh? I am. Okay. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Mm. What else we got out there? So we have four minutes left. We have some pre submitted student questions. One said, um, Dr. Muhammad, what have you observed in your current role at HCC in students that reminds you of you when you were a student or would shock the student version of you? Oh, you know, I was wild as a student. I was. For somebody as gifted as I was, I was wild. I would go to class in, um, in uh, boxer shorts. Mm. Yeah, eating cereal, walking across the campus like, yeah, tell me what to do because I'm grown. I mean, I was really grown in my mind at 18. I told you my mom didn't fool with me. She was like, I'm not fooling with that girl. It's something special about her. Uh-uh, because -uh. I mean, I was Did that come up in her background, anybody? No. <laughs> 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 the background <laughs> I mean, I was a little. So when I see the students, I feel them. I be like, yeah, be you. Be you, because we need you to be you. We don't, don't need be you to clothes. be. Yeah, do put your clothes on now. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I've worn the house slippers to class, and yes, and yes, I've worn yes. the, you know, you know, the pajamas. Yeah, I, I you know up. what I'm saying. We all do it. We yeah, showed up as our authentic it. self. But whatever it is, the point is, be you, because it has to be somebody who can engage with you in who you are, and love and appreciate the fact that you are showing up the way you are. Because that's what's important to us. We want you to show up. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So our next student question, uh, what is, Dr. Willis, what is the biggest factor that influences your leadership? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny. I can't. Mm, that was a good one. I got to think. <laughs> the biggest factor that influences my leadership, probably when I was pregnant and 19 years old at HBCU. I remember what it was like being invisible. And it is very hard to be invisible, mm. pregnant in Tallahassee, Florida, mm, mm, with a big mm. belly at 19. So mm. I know what it's like to have the eyes on you and everybody looking at you like you've done something wrong, as if sex doesn't exist and nobody does it. You know, I, we just that got caught, part. you know, but that has been a focal point for me and wanting to make sure that no other student experiences what I did. Absolutely. And having access to the resources. And after I had my kid, what happened after that? So for me, it's about remembering the past, like Sankofa, remembering exactly. the past That's and bring right. it That's with right. you in the future. And then making sure that no one else has that type of experience Absolutely. that you did. So. Yep. No scarlet letter A's over here. We okay. don't do the scarlet letter. Just go get you a condom from the wellness center. <laughs> Thank you. They had that orange bin last week. Mm -hmm. So we are at 2.59. We have one final comment from Julie Jones saying, when I was in elementary school, grades 1 to 3, 
we sang The Greatest Love of All, the original by George Benson in the beginning of class. Wonderful. Oh, wow, Wonderful. beautiful. Yeah. We sang uh, I Believe I Can Fly. Mm. Oh, we did too. For my eighth grade graduation. Yes, R. Kelly though. Yeah. Yeah. We did. That part. <laughs> we did. We it's before did. we knew all that. Yeah. Like, but that was the jam. That was the jam. I believe graduation. I can fly. And then that part. Woo. Yeah. When he said that. I believe yeah. I, I can, can touch, touch the sky. The sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the crew back here dancing. We love about it. it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. Mm. I believe I can soar. Woo! Is that I see me walking through the open door. I believe I can fly. I, I can, can fly. fly. I believe <laughs> I can fly. Woo! I believe I can fly. Well, there you yes. go. Yes. Woo! Love it. Love it. Oh my God. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a part two. Well, we have to do a part two. We have to come back on that. But with it, I think that's the perfect way to end this episode of Conversations from the Couch. Thank you for your oh, thank honesty, you. your I candor. Love it. Love it. And just that's why we have you here on this campus. That's so right. my sister president, right? Here. My sister president. Hey, you know, gotta we gotta make it happen. But thank you all for joining <laughs> us today for this episode of Conversations from the Couch. Happy Black History Month to you. And in March, we'll be celebrating Women's History Month and all the other months that come after that and we're really excited because pretty soon we're going to have a chief diversity officer on this campus to yes. really take us to the next level awesome. so with that thank you one last comment oh uh, dr tony can sing <laughs> look at that can <laughs> sing y'all need to do a talk y'all need another talk show we need another talk show we need to do this again <laughs> okay yeah, yeah okay we'll do it because we had our books this time yeah part we two didn't, we, we'll do that on part two part the two. books that we love for black history but anywho thank y'all for joining us we'll see you soon for the next episode of conversations from the couch